so in this third part of the class we will move from history to see the contemporary or the present practices of forest governance in india when we see forest governance practices in the contemporary times or in the post independent india we may broadly divide that or classify the forest governance regimes into three parts the colonial attitudes of forest or the colonial forest management practices which is characterized by characterized by by state monopoly state control over forest and using forest for the purpose of industry for the purpose of commerce and economic growth continued in fact in the post independent period so therefore from 1950 till 1970 we find a period of continuation of colonial legacy whereas from 70s onward there has been a paradigm shift in india's forest management practices so the second period the second regime of forest governance which we classify or which we talk, which begins from 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 mid 70s and continues till the early 90s and it is in this period that forest governance practices in india witnessed a significant change in terms of people's participation communities involvement in forest and finally the last regime which is said which we say that the contemporary regime is characterized by emergence of right based approaches in forest governance from mid 90s onward implemented its first national forest policy in the 1952 which focused on maintaining 60% of the land in hilly regions and 20% of the land in the plain regions under the forest cover so the forest policy of independent india in 1952 aimed at sustained supply of timber and other forest produces which are required for industry defense and for transportation and communication and the forest policy of post independent india emphasized on production forestry which means encouraging forest for the purpose of or encouraging forestry to support the process of industrialization and therefore encouragement was given to forest based industries like the rubber industry resin industry paper industry they increased and forests were considered as a raw material which can be used in this forest based industry however a paradigm shift emerged in forest forest governance in india from 1970s onward in the year 1972 the social forestry program was introduced based on recommendations of the national commission of on agriculture the social forestry program for the first time diverted its attention away from considering forest as raw materials it focused on activities like plantation with people's participation to meet the twin need or twin goals of increase availability of fuel wood for the local communities and reducing the demand on natural forest or on natural resources so the social forestry program was introduced in the year 1972 which emphasized on active people's participation or to create forest at the doorstep so that their day to day livelihood requirements could be met and dependence upon natural forest dependence upon could be reduced so social forestry program emphasized on developing village forest and it envisioned people's participation on three components so basically social forestry program has three components farm forestry village wood lots and street plantation farm forestry focused on converting non agriculture private lands into forest lands so therefore different uh, so several big farmers were given incentive to create their own forest village woodlot program emphasized on creating forest in the village common land which could be of use for the local community and street plantation focused on plantation activities on both sides of the streets so basically the the objective was to to have more and more forest because the focus was on maintaining the ecological balance focus was on enhancing people's participation and creating forest resources at the doorsteps of the people so this program or the social forestry program was one of the first initiative in indian forest history to consider forest as a source of livelihood to accept and acknowledge people's rights over forest people's demand over forest people's needs over forest to fulfill their basic requirements or livelihood requirements and based on the experiences of the social forestry program in the year 1988 india implemented its national forest policy so the new national forest policy of 1988 focused on 
environmental sustainability, soil conservation, maintenance of ecological balance, and more importantly, meeting the subsistence requirements of the local people. And joint forest management plan also recognize people's demand over forest, people's requirement over forest, and people's dependence on forest. And it made it clear that perhaps it is impossible to govern the forest without involving the people who depend upon forest for their day to day livelihood requirements and for their day to day requirements of the household. So, sea change took place in forest governance practices in India. Sea change took place in India's forest history in the year 1990 with this joint forest management program which called for a collaborative management between the communities and the forest department and it is this collaboration between the communities and the forest department that is responsible for for deciding over the forest for preparing the management plan over the forest and more importantly the joint forest management recognized people's requirement over the forest and it made it clear that the communities should be allowed, should be permitted for procuring, withdrawing non timber forest produces from the forest with certain restrictions or with certain terms and conditions. The third regime of forest governance practices in the post independent India, which emerged from mid 1990 onwards, may be termed as right based approach towards the forest. While in the previous Regimes of community participation. I am referring from the period from the from the emergence of the social forestry program till the 1990s. Communities were considered as part, communities are considered as beneficiaries who should be made a part of the community, who should be made a part of the forest management practice in the right based approach. Demand over forest or right over forest or people's dependence upon forest was considered as a right. People have the right over the forest and, and therefore they should be a part of the forest management plan. They are not just beneficiaries, but they are right holders. So that gives the community a new sense of identity, a new found confidence that they are not just beneficiaries who are there to be a part of the forest management plans written, drawn and prepared by the forest department but they are supposed to exercise collective rights of decision making and in this right based approach i may identify two specific policies two specific acts which are of significant which which is of great significance the first act that i am referring is the panchayat extension to scheduled areas act or the pesa act of 1996 and the pesa act or the panchayat extension to scheduled areas act empowered the gram sabhas and it it, it, it entailed that the Gramasava or the village council will have the power to be consulted in matters of and forest governance and it is the Gramasava which also is supposed to plan and manage minor local bodies. They should own the minor forest producers and they should exercise control over the institution of local resource management. So therefore PESA Act or the Panchayat Extension to Scheduled Areas Act made elaborate provisions for including the tribal communities where the local community or where the Gram Sabha will have the right to manage and control natural resources within the purview or within, within the control of the Gram Panchayat. The second act which becomes crucial in this right based regime is the recently enacted Forest Right Act or which is also known as the Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers Recognition of Forest Right Act 2006 or in, in, in short form known as FRA, Forest Right Act of 2006. There are several kind of rights that are entailed in Forest Right Act of 2006. The right to land on the occupation as well as customary, customary land, right of ownership of minor forest produces, right of water bodies, grazing land and habitat of primitive tribal groups and the right to protect, conserve and manage community forest rights. So the Forest Right Act or FRA of 2006 made elaborate provisions for vesting the right of a forest on the tribal communities. It basically talked about two kind of rights, the individual rights and the collective right. While the individual right was on the forest land which is used for, for residential purposes, homestead purposes and for, for farming purposes, what is perhaps more important for a forest management perspective is the collective right. 
because the forest right act made elaborate provisions for vesting collective right not individual right collective rights over forest on tribal communities that it is tribal communities which will be collectively responsible to govern a forest and it will be their right or to summarize the environmental history of india focusing on forest we may say that forest governance practices has come a long way through in india while the colonial approaches to forestry colonial treatment of forestry establish a state monopoly state control over the forest resources and in fact which was continued even after independence has witnessed sea change has witnessed significant paradigm shift beginning from 1980s onwards especially it is the 1972 social forestry program which heralded a new era of forest governance in india the history of forest governance witnessed a new approach a new pattern of forest governance where the central role is played by the communities and community participation involvement of local communities recognizing their right over forest recognizing their dependence upon forest that has emerged as paradigmic decisions paradigmic approaches of forest management and governance in india and to add to those approaches of integrating community and to add to those approaches of community participation the recent developments in community forestry the recent developments in in forest management has focused on right based approach where participation in forest activities or participation in forest governance is not just a privilege for the community where community is not just a beneficiary to participate in a forest governance plan developed designed and drafted by the forest department 